Okay. Notice of a public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville pursuant to Chapter 551, Title 5 of the Texas Government Code. The Texas Open Meetings Act notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene a workshop, an executive session, and a regular meeting on Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015 at 5.20 p.m., 5.45 p.m., and at 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of the Brownsville City Hall, Old Federal Building located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. A workshop, presentation, and discussion of the Charter Review Committee recommendations for amendments to the City Charter. Good evening, Mayor members of the commission. My name is Ruth Osuna. And uh, before I introduce the chairman of the Charter Review Committee, I wanted just to share a few items regarding the timeline. The Charter Review Committee did, uh, decided to have this workshop so that they could present the items that they've been talking about, some of the recommendations and their su suggestions. Um, on your agenda tonight, you have item number six, you don't have to act on that. Um, really, on se February the 17th is when uh, we have to have a public hearing and a first reading of the ordinance. But we decided to have this workshop so that we would have a little extra time to discuss some of these char proposed charter amendments and some of the suggestions that are being made by the committee. So um, I will answer any questions after the committee chairperson has made his uh, presentation on behalf of the committee and so let me introduce Miles Garza good evening Commission mayor commissioners um, as chairperson of this Charter Review Committee I am pleased to present our committee's recommendations and findings. We have, been, we have been honored to serve on such an important committee for our community. However, first let me introduce our committee members. Ann Whitco is our vice chair. Also in attendance is uh, Nareef Golonsky, Richard Abate, and Katie Yorker. I would like to provide you and the audience with some background regarding the committee's work. Brownsville is a home rule city, which means they can adopt any law that is not in conflict with any state or federal law, as opposed to a general rule city, which has to go in accordance with federal and state laws. What is very interesting is that our charter was adopted 100 years ago today, or this year, and charter amendments can only be placed on the ballot every two years and it has not changed and it has not changed that much since that time the committee worked hard in the short time that was given to us and in this time frame we looked at other cities charters to guide our discussions and decisions specifically we looked at 10 different cities some larger than Brownsville and some smaller than Brownsville we discussed various issues in light of the charter being hundred years old such as the antiquated language, obsolete sections, term limits, and compensation for elected officials. We also discussed developing a preamble for the city's charter, which would outline some of the city's guiding principles, such as equality. However, we had such a short time frame in which to work, but we were not able to engage the community or any other key stakeholders in our deliberations. Therefore, the committee concluded that it needed much more time to complete a more a thorough analysis. As some examples, the committee discussed at length the four areas listed on this slide. Some pose a conflict with other sections of the charter. Some are outdated. Some are city activities now are now responsibilities of Cameron County. And some just do not exist. However, the committee came to a consensus on three charter amendments to propose to the Commission for inclusion on the May 9th election ballot. The first proposition 
is shall Article 2, Section 22, Peace and Good Order, Paragraph 23 and 24, be repealed. The current language of Article 2, Section 22, Paragraphs, is an example of an outdated and antiquated language. This proposition proposes to eliminate it that, I, sorry, this proposition proposes to eliminate outdated language. The repeal of these paragraphs would not affect any current enforcement activities, such as behaviors and institutions discussed in these paragraphs are covered by state criminal code. The second proposition that we have is shall Article 2, Section 23, purchase a property for City Hall be repealed. While this slide only shows the first paragraph of Article 2, Section 23, this speaks to purchase of property by the city at some point in its history, further down Elizabeth, East Elizabeth Street from where we are today. The committee felt that this section of the charter is too specific and more importantly, obsolete. It is no longer applicable or useful. By repealing this section, the city still retains the ability to purchase, sell, and or lease property the repeal of this section does not prevent the city from acquiring, selling, or leasing property for its use. And it has no effect on city operations, ownership, or acquiring debt. And finally, our third proposition received the most discussion debate within our committee. The language of Proposition 3 was agreed to by a consensus of the committee. Shall the following amendment be added to Article 5, our administration provisions, Section 2, Term of Office. No person may serve as mayor or as a member of the city commission for more than two full consecutive four-year terms until passage of one year from the end of such two consecutive terms. Terms served prior to the approval of this amendment in 2015 shall not be counted in determining the years of service. And what this means, the intent of this proposition is to limit the number of years of service on the city commission. However, it's also for a person, it also allows a person to run again for office after not serving for one year. And the current city commission commissions are not penalized for the years already served as a proposition would go into effect in the beginning of 2015 and 2017. And lastly, the committee felt strongly about these two suggestions, primarily because of a short time frame in which we had to review the charter. The most importance of the city charter, the age of the charter, 100 years old, and the most importantly, seeking input from citizens and key stakeholders about various articles and sections in this document. Citizens must be made aware of the importance of the city charter and how the city is to be governed and operated. Therefore, the committee strongly urges the commission to appoint a charter review committee to begin a thorough review of the document and propose changes, if, if any, for the 2017 ballot for voter approval. 2017 is given because, as mentioned previously, the charter can only be placed on the ballot every two years. And lastly, the committee felt, also felt strongly that resources such as the staff and funding be provided in this review in order to fully research any contemplated revisions, seek expert advice on the revisions, and engage the community and allow for time to educate the community about the city charter and any proposed changes. Commissioners and Mayor, thank you for your time and attention. I will now open up for questions. I want to thank you and the whole committee for your time and attention to all this. Uh, I think you guys have done a marvelous job with a short period of time. Um, and um, I uh, fully agree with your recommendations. I, I, I think you guys have done a, a great job. Uh, I open it up to the commission if they have any. I also want to thank you for all of your efforts. It was a very tight time frame. I also agree with the uh, findings that you've had, including the more thorough review that's needed beyond this. Thank you. And I highly recommend and thank you for trying to get them a staff and some resources to do that. One of the things that we really need to uh, 
kind of up our, our game on. Uh, just as a funny aside, when I went to law school, it was against the law to, to, to pack any guns in your saddlebags. So that just tells you not only how old I am, but how antiquated the law was back then. <laughs> I have a question, Ruth. Um, <clears throat> I saw that you would be limiting the terms as far as the mayor and commissioners. I know that that was something that very much bothered somebody who's no longer here. Um, I just have questions. Are there any other local, county, or even our state boards that currently um, reflect that? Or would that just be something that's happening here because it was a personal <coughs> issue? Sure. Well, um, I, can, I can go ahead and answer that. We had, uh, out of the 10, cit or the 10 cities that we looked at that are kind of more or less the same size of Brownsville, they have certain uh, different, I guess, rules. They have, uh, you know, eight years, that, and they have two consecutive terms, and so we decided with the language that we're proposing, it kind of, it guarantees that at least two full terms will, will go into it, and before you have to wait a year and then run again for something else. Um, one of the, the committees, I believe, that follows this is uh, the BPUB, that only allows appointment for two terms of four years until is, is, after. I'm sorry, is that an elected position or is that an appointed position? It's an appointed position. Okay. Then the ones about the other cities are, are elected positions. Right. Okay. I, I had this same question uh, or concern because one of the motives for suggesting this was that it would encourage more people to run. I mean, anyone, anyone can run. It doesn't matter if there's an incumbent or, or an open seat. And term limits really can be set by the voters. They can vote someone out mm -hmm. or reelect them. But uh, the other ones, I, I agree. I, I served on the same committee. A lot of our language is old and obsolete. And we had the same constraints as, as your group. Uh, so I really appreciate you guys uh, working hard and bringing this to us. Thank you, Commissioner Villa. I have a question. Sorry, it's just um, So the voters certainly can uh, speak in this case that you can either vote to approve it or not um, with respect to term limits. And of the 10 cities, though, that you reviewed, you said you reviewed, I remember the name, I don't remember the name specifically, but uh, how many of them had term limits? Because all of those were elected officials. Um, it's to my recollection, it was half of them. Okay. Out of the 10 cities. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. Lubbock, Garland, Irving, Amarillo, Grand Prairie, Pasadena, Mesquite, McKinney, McAllen, Killeen. So in, in this proposal, if a district commissioner has reached his term limit, could he run for at large or just not run at all? I believe that we no. have. Mayor, um, members of the commission, it would be for any uh, position on the commission, including mayor or commissioner, whether it's a district or at large, you would have to sit out one year. Or two years, because <coughs> we're staggered. We'll stack. Well, yes, two years. I'll begin by thanking you for your service, all of you. Um, I know that I've been through two of these, and it takes up a lot of time from your families, from all your, from your jobs and everything. Um, I would also ask you if you would continue with your service as we go into 2017 so that we can further examine the charter, bring it up to date. Uh, that way legal can have an opportunity to be able to review it with you and be able to check. Uh, there are certain things in the charter that are obsolete simply because the state supersedes. So therefore, there, there's, it's not really even a discussion, something that needs to go, but we would need an updated document and I would appreciate you know those of you that continue i don't know th there was discussion on creating it and making it into a possible kind of like a board kind of like a board deal so that you all could serve and continue with with the service and once again thank you for your time because it is uh, we do realize that you know you were under constraints and you know there are like you know like commissioners said uh, there are i've been here 12 years and there's still projects that i'm not done with that I've been working with. There's projects that I started with and have come to fruition. There's projects that are dear to me. We're just finishing up right now. We're barely gonna start on the second phase of the Southmost Library. 
I've been here from when we turned dirt. And we're barely getting on second phase 12 years later. And that's because basically nobody puts money in the libraries. We found private donations. I got a private donation to, update, uh, to upgrade it. Didn't come from the city. Okay, and now we're looking at a second phase. And that's a project I'm still working on. And hopefully, God willing, you know, if, if reelected, continue to work on it and bring to, to completion within the next four years. But that's, uh, those are things to look at. You know, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, when somebody looks at it, it's, it's, it's very different when you sit up here and when you take ownership of certain projects. You know, I know that right now one of the biggest projects is downtown renovation. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, <laughs> I've been working on downtown renovation for six years and we're barely going to get started. You know, and that's something that some people would like to see into fruition and sometimes maybe it goes over, year two, over eight years, you know, like in certain projects. So it's not necessarily that we're against. It's just that when you, when you spend your time, you know, the charter says that city commissioners back in 1912 used to get paid $10 to attend a meeting. That needs to be updated. <laughs> 100, 103 years later, we still get paid $10 for a meeting. We're not asking for money. We're not asking for a salary. But what I'm saying is, you know, that's what's in the charter. Okay? And there are other things. Uh, I'd really, just because of the, the area I represent, there's a certain uh, little deal in there that says that you can still legally ride a horse inside the city limit. I'd appreciate it if you all left that in just for me. <laughs> I really appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner. And, and I guess to address that point, uh, uh, six months out, if you address, if you put a committee together, I mean, I would be happy to serve again. Thank you. Um, or, and a lot of us actually would be happy to serve again. <laughs> uh, then, uh, I mean, we can get at it and, and go into the 2017 cycle. Yeah. Thank you so much. So. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. Thank you. If my timepiece says correct, we're I'm at 544. 544. We have one minute to go into executive session, so everybody keep a one minute sprint, of, sprint cases one on. One minute of silence. Executive session discussion pursuant to section 551.087 of the Texas Government Code regarding economic development. Motion to move to executive session. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Evelyn. Evelyn. We have some refreshment for the kids, so they'll stick around. Uh, regular meeting, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, 
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, the Texas state, under God, and indivisible. Brian? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. This is Pastor Steve Dorman. On behalf of First Baptist Church, let me just convey our appreciation for each one of you and our love for you and continued prayers. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being such a good and mighty God. Thank you for holding us all in your hand. Thank you for filtering everything that happens to us through your mighty love and your presence. We pray for these individuals today that lead us in our city. We ask that your favor would be on them, your goodness to them, your blessings on them. We pray, Father, that you would just give them exceptional knowledge and ability to skillfully handle the issues before them tonight and even add an extra amount of divine grace and provision for them so they would recognize your hand and your care for them and for this city. Father, bless them. Let them just be surprised with joy and good things today. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Mayor's activity report. The commissioners. Mayor, I'd like to welcome our student ambassadors that are here for BISD. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting them with them on their first meeting when they first came to City Hall. And they're here tonight to attend the meeting, to take their notes, and to go back and report back to their committee when they meet. And I want to also thank Evelyn. I'll see Evelyn Cantu. I think she's, she's somewhere around here. So thank you to Ms. Cantu. And uh, please stick around because we do have some refreshments for you. So thank you to the student ambassadors for being here and joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Mary, if I could, um, I just wanted to let everybody know that this past week we celebrated Brownsville Day in Austin. And our mayor was honored with the proclamation on our Senate floor. And Commissioner Portillo and myself were honored with a proclamation for Brownsville um, on the House floor. And we had a very, very warm reception in Austin. And I just wanted to let the public know that we are being represented very well in Austin. And they constantly think about us. <laughs> and. Uh, so I just wanted to let everybody know that we participated in that. It was a beautiful event, and that's my report for this week. Mayor, I also have a report, unless you'd like to say something. No, go ahead, please, I'm sorry. Um, I would also like to report that we, Commissioner Longoria and I, along with Pete Gonzalez from the city, traveled to Mexico to welcome the Mr. Amigo 2014, Mr. Juan Osorio. It was a very nice ceremony. The mayor of Matamoros was also in attendance and some members from the Mr. Amigo Association. <clears throat> and it was quite refreshing to see that Mr. Osorio promised that when he comes down for the Charo Days festivities and to come out in the parade that he would bring some telenovela celebrities with him. So that's something that the residents of Brownsville uh, can look forward to. Um, I'd also like to mention I've been asked from several constituents as far as one of the projects that I've been working on for several months now, which is the marketing and PR, the rebranding of the logo design and everything. So I just wanted to give a public update that we are near the end of our campaign. We haven't presented to the commissioners yet, but I know everyone will be pleased. It's effort from several stakeholders within the community, all of the entities, residents from Brownsville, and also um, some stakeholders that the commissioners chose felt that they could really bestow good knowledge, insight on, on the city of Brownsville and where we see this logo and motto heading. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the United Way of Southern Cameron County's Charity Navigator rating has been revised and our very own United Way of Southern Cameron County is now a four-star charity. Even more gratifying is that we scored 97.58 out of a possible 100 points, which is higher than United Way worldwide, among others. So as a 
Board member of United Way, it is amazing to see firsthand the caliber of individuals that are part of this board and the hard work and effort that it takes to acquire this high rating. So I just wanted to congratulate United Way of Southern Cameron County as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And, <coughs> and you brought something to mind. Um, I do also want to congratulate United Way. They're doing an excellent job for um, some of you who I'm sure you're, you're pretty much familiar, but um, they do a, a great job for our county. Um, there's two things that I, I guess I was forgetting is that come February is going to be a pretty busy month with char days and all the good things that are going. There's an air show, um, so everybody keep your calendars posted. Um, next week on February the 10th, uh, we will be having the sister uh, city agreement with Madam Morris being signed. Uh, I saw the mayor, the uh, Alcaldesa Leti, uh, last Friday, uh, and we will do the formal sister city signing agreement uh, on February the 10th. Uh, if I understand, it's approximately at 10 o'clock in the morning, so everyone is invited. Uh, we should be doing it at the BNM bridge in the middle of the bridge, uh, so that should be good. And then on Ash Wednesday or February the 18th, um, I will be addressing uh, the city on the state of the city, um, and that will be during at the uh, event center. Um, and so again, everybody's invited. I, I don't know all the details. Um, I'm just getting ready for it, that's all. Anyway. Um, that concludes that part. Now we can go to proclamations. Proclamations. Consul General Sandra Elizabeth Agreda. <coughs> Commissioners, you're going to be Rick or? Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Why don't you just have her up here? Turn this out. Yeah. You can have the rest of your entourage <laughs> while, while the commissioner reads the proclamation. Señorita Consul, antes de comenzar con la presentación, gracias por su asistencia, gracias por acompañarnos de parte del alcalde, de parte de los comisionados de esta ciudad. Muchas gracias por sus atenciones. Y más que nada, recordándole nomás que nos gustaría tener una presencia salvadoreña en Bronzil. Así es que si puede, cuando llame a sus oficinas generales en, en su país y que se acuerden de Bronzil, porque en Bronzil sabe que tienen un buen amigo. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. The following is a proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, recognizing Consul General of El Salvador, Sandra Elizabeth Agreda, for her work on behalf of the Salvador community residing in South Texas and the border with Mexico. And whereas Sandra Elizabeth Agreda, Born in 1958 and raised in San Salvador, Republic of El Salvador, Central America, studied in a university in San Salvador, married for nine years, is the mother of two daughters and grandmother of two, who studied nursing and dedicated her support to the communities in need and supported nursery rights. And whereas at the age of 35, she became the Republic of El Salvador's attorney. A year later, she became the notary of the Republic of El Salvador. In 1997, she became the first vice assistant of the Legislative Assembly of El Salvador, their Congress, then became the Section Legislative Advisor and Advisor of Groups of Deputies in Congress. And in 2003, she left the legislature to initiate a project of legal advice for the support of Salvadorans in the area of Houston, Texas. In 2009, she was named the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of El Salvador to take the, the diplomacy with the General Consul of El Salvador in Houston, Texas, where she made permanent residence to represent her country. And whereas in 2013, she dedicated to return to her country 
to engage in the search of social projects that contribute to the educational development of young people and families with limited resources, scholarships, and projects, constituting in the State of Texas Foundation a hand to Latin America while looking for resources to develop her dream scholarship project. In June of 2014, she was again called by the Minister of Foreign Affairs to open a new consul office for El Salvador in McAllen, Hidalgo County, Texas, with jurisdiction over the zone of South Texas and to care for undocumented immigrants after the latest humanitarian crisis. And whereas Sandra Elizabeth Agreda, a woman who was fought for others since childhood and spent her best years of life working for the most dispossessed and social freedoms defined as a social activist and has become the first general consul of El Salvador for South Texas, including Brownsville, Texas, providing orientation, advisory, and protective services to El, to El Salvador community and providing goodwill in the region. And whereas Sandra Elizabeth Agreda has been vital to the planning of and has opened the door to a Central American cultural art and trade center to be located in Brownsville, Texas. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by the authority of the, vest uh, the charter vested by said city, do hereby recognize Consul General of El Salvador, Sandra Elizabeth Agreda, for outstanding and valuable service and support on behalf of El Salvador community of South Texas and for promoting goodwill in the South Texas region and further wish her continued success during her tenure as El Salvador Consul General in South Texas. And it's done this third day of, May, of February, 2015, and it's signed by Antonio Martinez, the Mayor of Brownsville and the City Commission. Felicidades. Charlie, what? See what's uh, why don't you go ahead and go to the... Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. En primer lugar, eh, quiero dar gracias a Dios por permitirme este gran honor de estar parada frente a personalidades tan importantes como son ustedes y me siento honrada. De verdad, creo que no sé si merezco tanto honor, pero lo voy a hacer valer porque para mí es un gran privilegio recibir esto. Y eso me motiva a seguir dando mi vida, mi lucha y mi, el intelecto que Dios me ha permitido y, y mi profesión para la gente que más lo necesita. Yo creo que se ha sembrado la, la semilla acá en el sur de, te, de Texas para que nosotros contribuyamos, no solamente para representar a nuestros ciudadanos, sino para apoyar proyectos que permitan que ya no se dé esa desgarrante odisea de que los niños puedan viajar solos por más de millones de millas eh, sin sus padres y que vengan a ser objeto de realmente de maltrato de muchas personas que comercian con los humanos. Y también para Estados Unidos va a ser muy bueno que nosotros trabajemos porque yo ahora llevo una visión más grande que la que conseguí en, Tech, en Houston, porque ahora he entendido de que nosotros, como salvadoreños, tenemos que trabajar para que nuestros niños ya no emigren de una forma irregular a este país y que también a Estados Unidos nosotros le apoyemos en educar y, y proyectar programas de desarrollo integral para que las familias no, se, no viajen de esa forma que lo hacen, sino viajen por una opción de que quieren hacerlo, pero no por una obligación de que el hambre los está angustiando y yo creo de que es un gran reto que me llevo y el otro reto que llevo es hablar con mi presidente, ya pedí una audiencia para decirle de que, y yo, yo no es porque estoy queda, quedando bien con todos ustedes, sino porque eso es lo que yo he visto, yo soy más cónsul de Bronzeville que en McAllen. Entonces, el proyecto que llevo y la petición eh, con hechos concretos y con pruebas a mi presidente es decirle de que realmente el consulado tiene que estar en Bronzeville. Y Bronzeville para mí ha sido mi segunda cuna, mi segunda tierra. Amo a Bronzeville, de verdad, he conocido gente muy linda y 
ahora con este reconocimiento, para mí es un compromiso más. Lo recibo comprometiéndome a hacer todo lo que tenga que hacer como mujer, como ciudadana, como abogada y como diplomática para poner en alto el nombre de Bronzeville. Yo creo que voy a aparecer otro día por acá, capaz no como cónsul ya, pero en otros proyectos que van a poner más en alto aún el nombre de Brownsville. Muchas Muchísimas gracias. Muchísimas gracias. gracias. Muchísimas Introduction of intern Ms. Gina Vaught. Oh. Mayor, members of the commission, uh, we have been honored with an intern from Germany. Uh, I believe some of you have met her and she traveled with us to Austin last week and uh, she uh, looked at a map and said, Browns is the first city in America, so I want to go there. Uh, she got here a few weeks ago. She's going to be with us till April uh, with her internship. She is studying public management at uh, the University of uh, Ledenwig, Germany. She can say it better than I can. But uh, she wants to present herself to you all, say hi, and we're honored to have her here. She's done uh, very well uh, in, in making us smile every day that she comes in with us, and uh, we're learning from her just like she's learning from us. So. Please help me uh, welcome uh, Gina Vault. Yes, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as uh, Mr. Kepler already said, I'm Gina Vogt and I'm from Germany. I study public management, it's a, it's a bachelor degree course, and uh, the university is called uh, University of Applied Sciences in Ludwigsburg, Germany. That's near Stuttgart, if anybody knows it. And uh, within my study, I have to serve four internships, and uh, one of them I can uh, do abroad. And I thought, yeah, I'd go somewhere I've never been. So I just opened Google Maps and thought, I want to be somewhere where it's nice and warm. <laughs> and so I ended up in Brownsville. And uh, I really enjoy my time here. And uh, yeah, it's um, my unpaid internship. It lasts three months. I uh, started it on the... Um, uh, 15th of uh, January and I will stay another two months till the 1st of April and uh, I will work with Mr. Arnold Paris from the city manager's office um, on a, a yeah, city marketing project and uh, the first project is that we will create some video vignettes uh, where we show uh, activities that you can do in the city so I will go uh, out uh, outside with the bicycle and uh, with my sport clothes and show everybody what you can do here <laughs> in the parks and on the trails and uh, or in the museums. And uh, the second project is that we will uh, place some information centers in uh, several city buildings. So also the citizens of Browns will know what they can do. And there we will show the video vignettes too. And uh, yes, what I also wanted to say, I will probably, oh, no, I will start an uh, online blog diary, um, probably this week sometimes, and uh, on blogger.com. Uh, and uh, I want to tell uh, people in Germany what I experience here, uh, because they don't know anything about Brownsville. <laughs> Not even my travel agency knew anything about it. <laughs> so I thought I would do an uh, yeah, online uh, a blog diary and if you're interested you can also follow me follow my blog diary and uh, yes I want to thank you all that I um, have the great opportunity to stay here uh, I'm really enjoying my time and I really love the weather well right now not but <laughs> um, yes and uh, especially I want to thank the city manager's office and the city manager and the human resources department that they yeah that they supported me and uh, that you also that uh, everybody is really friendly here and 
uh, shows me what uh, the city is working on. That's really interesting because it's really different to the German uh, system. So thank you that I can stay well, here. Nice to have you here and enjoy thank your you. time in Brownsville, okay? Thank you. Will, thank you. <laughs> Charlie, it would be great if we could get Patty to feature her blog on the City of Brownsville Facebook page, like yes. have the, the link to it. That way yes. residents could also have access to that and follow on her <coughs> experience and her view of what it is to be here and work with she's, us. She's, she's done very well in, in giving us instruction and she'll give us a go ahead when to do that. But we're, we're gonna do everything we can to make sure that she uh, features Brownsville in her hometown in that small city in Germany. You know, it's funny that she says she's from Stuttgart. My husband served in the army in Stuttgart and he has all of these wonderful stories about it and I'm gonna see if they're true. <laughs> all right. Employee of the month. Well, we're featuring another young lady. Uh, this is our employee of the month for September. Please help me welcome Katrina Mendoza. <laughs> Katrina. Karina. Karina Mendoza, I'm sorry. Karina's been with us since 2010. She uh, is an administrative technician in the Human Resources Department. Uh, a lot of initiative. She has requested and been out of the, the uh, opportunity to work with many departments in our city uh, to learn as much as she can. Received a lot of knowledge. She's uh, attending the uh, University of Texas. She's a junior there. She is studying. Uh, and, and attempting to get her Bachelor of Arts in Legal Studies and Business Administration. And her goal is to receive a, a master's degree in human uh, resources and be one of the leaders our, of our city pretty soon. So please help me welcome her. She is obviously entitled to a watch, even though human resources people can never be late for work. <laughs> Black, the emblem, and she's eligible for the employee of the year at our banquet in December. So please help help me welcome Karina Mendoza. She's got to be. I just want to say that I'm grateful and honored to work for this beautiful city, and I want to thank my directors for all their support. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Item number five. Consent agenda items, items A through D. Move approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Public hearing. Public hearing and action on first reading on ordinance number 2015-1597, <coughs> ordering and calling a general municipal election for the purpose of submitting to the duly qualified voters of the city of Brownsville several propositions for the amendment of several articles of the charter of said city by repealing certain sections of several articles, adopting new sections for said articles, and amending several articles of such charter, providing for the method of voting in such election, both at the polls and early voting for personal appearance and early voting by mail, stating the qualified of the voters permitted to vote in such election and the manner in which the same shall be conducted and the returns thereof made, establishing election precincts designating polling places and appointing officers of such election, providing for the giving of notice of such election and dealing with other matters incidental to the subject. Mayor, members of the commission, uh, the uh, Charter Review Committee uh, put in their time. We had a workshop to see what, uh, what they've come up with. Uh, I've been asked to remind you that uh, uh, if you'd like to study this a little further, there is time uh, to uh, take up the matter at the next meeting and still make it on the ballot. If you all have any questions. This is it's a public hearing. Public hearing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uresti. Mm -hmm. Robert Uresti. Um, I just got nothing out of this right now. Because basically, a lot of people that are behind me are asking, what were the changes? Will those changes be on the uh, 
on the website for this, uh, the city so we can see those uh, provisions that were changed. If, if it gets approved, it will be part of the public document that will go out with the general election. Once we draw for, for names on the, on the ballot, that will also be included on there. So along with the people that are going to be on the ballot, they'll also be able to uh, see the if, if any of this gets approved. I know, but I, I think the question was okay. whether we can have something on the web. Was anything published on the website, Ruth? It's right. Mayor, it's members of the commission, nothing was uh, posted on the website, but we can do that. And I have the report that I can give. Right. But for now, they, I they think can look under the agenda, yes. and, and it's on there, what yes. we're looking at now. Yes, and we can put the proposed propositions on the website as well as no. the recommendations I know that one of the things that was mentioned was maybe um, expanding into different locations for early voting which I thought was one of brilliant absolutely brilliant because the more places we can offer perhaps we'd have a larger amount of people interested in, in having better access to voting okay. and I think that's I, don't, I don't think that's addressed in, in these amendments is that correct no, no, that's no. Another oh I'm sorry I'm sorry <laughs> no 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 I'm just in. I'm trying to limit it to what it is that the commission uh, the the committee addressed and was ready to address at this particular time oh, yeah, but the and was and then I'm the only thing that I'm that I'm a little concerned with is not having it posted on the website ahead of time and if there you know there there might be a little bit of cautionary wins here by saying why don't we give the people a couple of weeks to kind of take a look at it on the website before we even get to this particular point I didn't realize it hadn't been on the website but again I'm not criti being critical it's just that you guys have done a lot of yeoman service and great work uh, but it might be a good idea to, to put it on there for a couple of weeks and let some of these folks take a look at it before we actually open up discussion on the first reading City Secretary uh, yes. Would that hinder the process for elections? No. no, we put it as separate items so we can vote on this one, and then we vote on the other one for to have the we're calling the election. Mayor, I, I, Mayor. I, 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 but this would, oh. this would go on the I thought. I thought, John, you said that if we, we could. It, ne it, it won't hinder us for putting it on on the ballot. That, uh, that, that's correct. If, if you take action on it, if to put it on the ballot at the next commission meeting, uh, that's be plenty of time to get it on the ballot. Okay. I'd like a, to make a motion to table. It's motion possible. to table it's is on the floor. Oh, it's oh, a public sorry. hearing, and I think we have people that want to speak. Still a public hearing. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. P public hearing has not been closed. Mayor, members of the commission, just want to uh, tell you that the intent of tonight was to try to get it out into the public for the first time through the workshop. We can now put it on the website so that there would be at least two weeks so that the information is out there. Ruth, because I, we, didn't I, have yeah. a, we didn't have an opportunity to have the, I, the I'm community. perfectly happy with that. And, and I, you know, again, I, it wasn't, um, I, th I think it's, it, it was well to do it through the workshop. But I will listen to anybody else that, and I mean, and that's going to be posted on the website, Mr. Odesti. So maybe you'll have a couple of weeks to kind of peruse it and, and then come back. Yes, because this is the first public hearing, and then you're going to have a second one. And then right. after that, you know, right. that's Correct. why I said it's, yeah. we, I'm lost. That's I, why. I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming forward. Uh, does that eliminate the need for any more public hearing? Or Dutch, do you have something else to say? My name is Dutch Fisher. I'm very proud to um, own some businesses in this city. Very proud to spend a lot of time in this city. As far as proposition number one, I agree for wholeheartedly. Um, medicants, in case those of you that may not know what they are, are religious orders which depend directly upon charity for their livelihoods. And so I'm glad to see that being taken out of there and I think it simplifies that ordinance very well. On proposition number two, I, I too, I agree wholeheartedly. I do have just a couple questions on that. Um, such fender liens notes um, bear an interest rate not to exceed 5%, but not to exceed 10 years. Um, I think that's a great idea. But what about the effects of vendors' liens, which could substantially exceed the 32,500? such as roofers, I can't even get up on top of that building for less than 32.5. dollars 
such as plumbers and things like this? How are we going to get people to bid on certain things like that? I'm just curious about that because I come from a time, my first real estate transaction was on a second residence and he put it on an Amex card at 18% because bank loans were 19 and a half. And so I just was curious. Do we have an answer? Okay. And on proposition number three, yes, um, five cities <coughs> were and five are not. Three are larger than ours and are much more progressive. One is Irving, one is Pasadena, one is Killeen. Having visited there many times, um, they've had some issues and that's why they did do term limits. I don't know what y'all are scared about. I mean, if someone can't get a project done in tw 12 years, well, stay there for eight, drop out for a year, and then get back on it, you know? But I mean, um, you know, it's term limits, I think, are long overdue. And in closing, I would like to address this to Commissioner Gowan. Commissioner Gowan, I, like you, I am very concerned about TxDOT and state funds being diverted from fire from bike and hike trails to road and infrastructure. And I hope that that doesn't come to pass. Thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me to speak in front of you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chris? Evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Chris Davis, County Elections Administrator. As a purely logistical concern to address Commissioner Longoria's question, uh, I ask that you have a decision, yay charter amendments or nay charter amendments by maybe March 9th, because I need, if the city agrees to go with the county in conducting this election, I need that much time ahead of time to order your ballots, get them printed, get them proofed by the city secretary's office, city manager and legal, uh, and get those underway for any overseas voters. We got to get those out uh, and mailed to voters 45 days out. Okay. Uh, give me two weeks beyond that gives us around March 9th time, uh, that'd be helpful for would me. You be, would you be kind enough, uh, Chris, to send, send the city an email as to the timeline and address it to, to Ruth? Uh, that way we have it in writing. You know, I'm a, I'm a lawyer and like everything in writing. Very well. Have Thank done you. it. I'll do it again. Thank you. Okay. Ruth? Mayor, members of the commission, just to let you know, um, at the beginning of the presentation with the workshop, we had a timeline, and that was taken into consideration not only to get it to Cameron County, but also to legally publish it twice as we are required. Okay. So I will share that timeline with Chris. Right. And we can get, get, get that out and disseminate it. Okay. Now, any other public hearing? If not, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to close yes. public hearing. Motion to close. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. I think there was, is there a motion still to the table? Motion and table. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. 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 Uh, I'm sorry, there's three? Three nays. Three nays to table? Okay. Um, then the nays carry. Okay, because I'm, I'm not voting on this one. Okay. Um, so now we have, is there a motion then for the, from the NAID side to uh, continue with this process? Or? I'll make a motion to approve uh, Proposition 1 and 2 to get on the ballot. Second. Th excuse me, I thought there had to be a second reading. There will be. It'll be a consent. You're voting on it, but you're going to have a second reading. Yeah. Okay, and so the idea, Councillor, is you're voting on two out of three, is that gonna right? You're going to vote twice because it will be on the consent okay. agenda item at the next meeting, I guess. Yeah. At the next meeting it will be a consent agenda item. It's, but if, if someone disagrees, they can remove it following the procedure. That they okay. Um, okay. I, so we have a motion to approve, and do we have a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, and those opposed, I'm going to vote nay because I don't think the public has had sufficient time to take a look at all these things. I agree. I, I agree. don't see why we can't wait until the next meeting because we well, need I mean, a that, second that's, reading. Well, that's anyway. our prerogative, but now we, next, we now have a tie vote. Under the next so meeting, no action. so we have no action. Okay. Under the next meeting, it would be under consent. a consent. If you put it on as an action, 
would we go in action and then immediately go uh, to elections? It'll so, but, be as an action item in a public hearing at the next meeting since there seems to be. Yeah, but basically, uh, Council, we <coughs> just, it, it doesn't go anywhere right now because if it's a three it to three. It doesn't go anywhere right now. But yeah. There's going to okay, be Okay, so it's got the same effect of giving the, the, the public a little bit of time to visit that and then, you know, you guys can put it back on the agenda, okay? Um, moving on, public comment. We have two.
Item 8, consider, consideration and action on resolution number 2015-007, providing for a general municipal election to be held on May the 9th, 2015, for the purpose of electing a mayor, three members of the city commission, and authorizing execution of an interlocal cooperation agreement with the Cameron County Elections Administrator and dealing with related matters. This item is only to call the election. This one does not include the charter. Because we need, th this is the period that we would call the election. And we'd be doing the contract, if you all agree, uh, with the county. And right. Mr. Davis is here, if you all have any questions. Um, we did provide you with information of option one and two, and uh, the differences are the early voting locations. And Mr. Davis can answer, you know, mention that. Mayor, commissioners, good evening. Um, you know, I c always think of ways to, uh, I guess, remove hurdles for voter participation. And it occurred to me when looking at a map and looking at the historical early voting sites for your city elections, uh, and those early voting sites, of course, are the main branch public library on Central Boulevard. Uh, my office downtown next, or next to the courthouse uh, used to be Christ the King Church, now Brownsville Public Library's southmost branch, and uh, University of Texas Brownsville, or slash TSC. Three of those sites are kind of in the south, what I consider the downtown and or southmost area, and I think there was a large swath that I view of the city of Brownsville that was, in my opinion, being underserved as far as an early voting location. So I took the initiative to, to, to reach out to uh, uh, Griselda and the city secretary's office and, and, and uh, city manager Kabler and, and, and kind of think of what other sites we could possibly use for early voting. Uh, obviously, it's the city commission's decision. They tell me, they tell the county elections department where they'd like their early voting sites to be. But I'd like to propose uh, possibly moving the site from University of Texas of Brownsville to a site that may be more centrally located in the city limits, uh, possibly the Brownsville PUB building, uh, possibly the Brownsville Community Health Center. I went out there and met with Emily Alpert today. They'd love it. She actually told me to tell you she'd love it, Mayor, because she gets to vote right there out of her office. She doesn't have to travel <laughs> anymore. Um, but just to better serve the areas, we always prefer public buildings, uh, non-schools during early voting, schools, uh, seven days, eight days of early voting is distracting for schools. We'll do the schools for election day on Saturday. But for early voting, we like public buildings with great access. Uh, uh, human traffic is a, is a blessing and a curse. You can get more people to vote there, but at the same time, you may be in their way. So uh, I'd like to propose the commission consider uh, that having that early voting site that was traditionally at UTB or TSC and have it possibly move to the center of Brownsville, uh, possibly at PUB, possibly at the Brownsville Community Health Center. I think we had talked about uh, the event center, but I think that is uh, booked pretty <laughs> solidly. Uh, but that's where I'm coming from. We don't want to interfere with anybody's quinceanera. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm not sure that I know how this works with regards to changing any early voting. Is this just simply uh, something that the election recommends to us and then we can say I, there are no pre-clearance uh, requirements as of now the city commission can tell me where they want okay. their early voting but sites and what I'm saying to you sites. is that this action item number eight just simply addresses Griselda's you know yeah, so we can call the election so you can call the election now the choice of where you put early voting or whatever else you do Chris is that does it have to be done by resolution or is it just by it was explained to me that part of your order was the early voting sites today mm -hmm. I would I would recommend that the Brownsville Community Health Center is an excellent location um, I know that PUB is also a great location and as I accidentally jumped the gun before <laughs> Um, I think that it's wonderful that you are offering us this. Um, the university is, is in a certain corner of town. These locations are centrally located. Um, that is within District 2. That is one of the elections that will be taking place this uh, next election. And I think it's wonderful that you are trying to get more people accommodated and participating in these elections. Which um, is Chris, I have a 
silly question, but not at all. are we limited to only four sides? No, you're certainly not. Okay, uh, you can because go more, I would hate to less. deter the university students, and if it's a matter of <clears throat> of staff, maybe we could get the um, uh, what's that program that Father Armand Center for Civic Engagement. Yes, thank we you. can always find staff to staff your sites, but keep in mind this is an early voting site. Eight days of early voting, it's an increase in cost for eight days. Uh, of early voting average of 10 to 11 hours a day for eight days what but it's all it's a possible it's a possibility one of the the reason I chose UTB to move from is because what we found is in the last two city elections 2013 and 2011 a mere 7% or so have been coming from there and of those 7% we found they're mostly faculty or adults and not a lot of whole of students and that's not saying it's not a worthy cause it is a worthy cause to get these students involved but we haven't been seeing uh, the reward for that input of resources and personnel, but there's room for improvement there. I, I would just hate the ramifications of what are we telling the students their vote doesn't matter, even though it's such a low turnout. And I understand. I mean, can I went I, through the election cycle. I know it's a small amount of, can of I, individuals. Can I offer, even though it might be an increase in cost a little bit, I would like to continue with the young people to try to encourage mm -hmm. them to stay in the in the voting process, even though right now we're still. Um, and then still open up another one. You're talking about eight days um, cost. Right. How much cost, <coughs> more or less? I don't have it broken down uh, by day. I want to say an early voting site averages per day. I mean, uh, an early voting site averages about, gosh, I want to say 13 to $1,400 uh, for the, the eight days. I think if I was going by uh, the quote, I didn't have it broken down by site. I can get that information to the secretary's office. And there's no way we could get some university students to volunteer to be? Well, we usually pay our poll workers, whether it, for whether whatever election we conduct, yeah, they're paid, and the state election code kind of mandates that they are paid for their time. I see. Mayor, I'd, if anybody does have any, anything else to say, I'd like to make a motion to approve this action item and suggest option one for the early voting locations. Second. Okay. And option one, I'm sorry, I don't have that in front of me. That's the one that includes the main library. Uh, I'm sorry, Cameron County Court, uh, Courthouse, Southmost Library, uh, Main Library, and the University of Texas. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 It's, okay, I'll, I'm going to vote for aye. So that's three. All those against? Oh, you I okay. So motion carries. We've got four four votes. Okay. I, so you, we're going to stay as we are right now. I think what happens again, um, without any criticism whatsoever, some of these items or some of these options. And again, I I I didn't realize the cost. To be honest with you, um, but I think we need to kind of get a little bit more dissemination, Mark, uh, on some of these things. So can I get clarification then, Mayor? The, commission, the will of the commission is to keep the traditional four early voting sites that Correct. we've had in past elections? That's right. Very well. And thank you very much for, you. Your, for your time. Item number nine. Uh, Mayor, we're going to be reading uh, item 10 before we read item nine. Oh, I'm nine. sorry. That's right. You left me a note here. <laughs> Let's go to item number 10. Okay. Item 10, consideration and action to acknowledge the financial statements and cash investment report for the city of Brownsville for the first quarter ended December 31st, 2012. Honorable Mayor and City Commissioners, in front of you, you have a binder of the financial statements. I also have a presentation I'll go briefly go over. We have the, I'm gonna present the unofficial and unedited financial statements for the first quarter ended December 31st, 2014. Financial highlights, uh, sales tax are exceeding last year's numbers by 6.96% or about 4.77% above a, a budget projections. Uh, tax levy is uh, slightly increased over the, the same period of last year. Uh, based on the first quarter receipts of uh, fiscal year, veterans uh, bridge revenues have increased 26% for the same period of last year and 40.27% over budget projections. Uh, building permits values increased by 14.49% for the same period of 2014. Increases in new residential uh, permits values has offset decreases in commercial permits values. Unemployment rate uh, continues to decrease. Uh, unemployment rate for December 14 is 7.8%. Utility expenditures are 14% higher than last quarter. Uh, hotel motel receipts are 4.27% lower than the same amount uh, period last year. This is attributed to uh, some of the uh, uh, remittance of uh, hotel motel tax that will be coming uh, subsequent quarter. 
Uh, we have a sales tax comparison here uh, that shows uh, the uh, uh, actual year-to-date increase of 437,000, budget increase 305,000 on sales tax. This is a bar graph for the sales tax uh, revenues collected through multiple years. Uh, Veterans Bridge, uh, similar schedule. Uh, again, uh, we have uh, actual year-to-date increases 90,000, budget 125,000. Uh, another bar graph indicating uh, the uh, trend of uh, revenues. Uh, you see there's a significant increase between 2013-2014. Uh, uh, building permits, uh, as, I, as I indicated, there's an increased value of 40.49%. Uh, um, even though there's a few, fewer uh, permits, they're, they're, the values of those permits uh, bring it up to 40.49% increase. The uh, building permits trends over the years, uh, over 2012, 13, and 14, seem to be consistent. We anticipated the current 2015 year to be possibly the same. Uh, PUB quarter transfers for the first period, there's an increase of 803,283 uh, compared to last quarter, which is good. Uh, unemployment rate history, uh, general fund balance sheet indicated there, total assets 53 million. Uh, general fund uh, fund balance summary on here. Uh, basically, on this one, you have your uh, beginning fund balance, uh, your revenues and expenditures. You have uh, estimated fund balance at year end of seventeen million dollars, which re represents uh, seventeen point two one percent. We always want to have this one at at least fifteen percent. Uh, revenue expenditure summary. Uh, this is a general fund statement of revenue uh, expenditures and changes in fund balance. Uh, these are all the revenues. Uh, I'll show a bar graph right now representing all these uh, trends. Uh, this is the bar graph uh, on here. It's in color. Uh, the bar graphs indicated in blue are, are actuals for 2014 through December compared to uh, fiscal year 2015 actuals and then the budget for 2015. On here, pretty much uh, they all uh, have uh, positive increases. Uh, this is a slight uh, fees and service slightly decreased. This is attributed to Ambulance service fees have uh, slightly decreases because of runs have decreased. Uh, expenditures also, uh, you can see that total uh, expenditures are, are 20, uh, just bear, uh, about 25% of budget, which is good. Uh, again, similar schedule representing the different uh, categories of the expenditures on here. Uh, under sanitation, there's a decrease of 53%, uh, but this is attributed to uh, uh, plastic bag uh, related expenditures on here. Uh, fund balance, unassigned fund balance, as you see, the trend after 2011 has been increasing throughout the years. Uh, 2014 is an estimate as we haven't uh, concluded our, our, our audit. Uh, on here, um, it represents right now, uh, from last year, went from 17.85 to tentatively unaudited is 19.39%. Uh, this, uh, this, this graph represents the uh, the uh, fund classification is broken down by assigned, uh, committed, restricted, and unassigned fund balance. Uh, Commission Tourism Fund, uh, currently we have uh, revenues uh, uh, under expenditure for 193,000. A lot of expenditures are disbursement to uh, entities. Uh, that's why there's, there's a significant amount here. But there is a transfer from general fund that's pending that will bring this back uh, possibly in the, in, the, in the black with the current uh, fund balance available. Community development uh, show a negative. This is attributed to revenues that, uh, grant revenues that we have to uh, get this uh, quarter. Non-bonded debt, uh, fund balance of uh, $4,322. Uh, Non-bonded debt, we have fund balance of two million five hundred three. We have uh, uh, bond payments that are gonna be coming up uh, February 14th. We'll reduce this amount. Uh, landfill fees, we have a fund balance of December 31st, 650000 Airport fund, uh, we have a deficit of uh, 554000 Again, we have a general fund transfer that still has to be uh, recognized this quarter. Bridge fund, uh, we have uh, uh, revenues of 166000 These are in the general ledger. Uh, these do not reflect what reports that we've gotten from the county, so this is uh, significant more right now. Motor vehicle parking system, we are uh, revenues over expenditures of 46000 uh, public transit, uh, again, this operates in a deficit. You have operating revenues, operating expenses. Uh, the loss is 50% uh, of the loss covered by the FTA. Uh, local shares are, are, are different revenue types, uh, which also include uh, state operating assistance. Right now, local share total of 533,000. Brownsville Gulf uh, has a uh, revenues at, uh, under expenditures. Again, we have a transfer from general funds still pending this quarter. Uh, 
uh, the medical insurance uh, fund, uh, right now we have our contributions in excess of our expenditures. Uh, brings up our fund, uh, fund balance as of December 31st, 1970000 uh, This is an investment report uh, broken down uh, between the end of September and uh, end of December, uh, broken down the, by demand, certificate deposits, uh, uh, investment in pools, and tech, and investment in pools, total of 70944130 and this is a breakdown of uh, how much 52% uh, in public investment pools, uh, uh, demand deposits of 43% and certificate deposits 5%. Concludes presentation. Any questions? Any questions of Lupe? Approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. It's item number 10. Now you have to go to back to item number 9. Yes. Item 9. Consideration and action to adopt budget amendment resolution number 2015-006 <coughs> to amend the general fund, convention and tourism fund, community development fund, landfill tipping fee increase fund, airport fund, motor vehicle parking system fund, public transit, Brownsville Golf Center fund, and 2012 Certificate of Obligation Fund to provide funding for cost of living adjustments to non-collective bargaining employees. Honorable Mayor, Mr. City Commissioners, uh, on the screen we have a analysis of cost of living increases for non-collective bargaining employees. This represents uh, towards the bottom. You'll see uh, general fund contributions in order to pr to uh, to allow for a three percent increase effective February 9th through September 30th, the general fund contributions of 495,000, self-supporting funds of 90,000, total amount of 585,000. Uh, we're proposing that uh, to uh, use this increase in sales tax revenue to, to fund this. I hear a motion. Um, before, before we make the motion, I just want to thank our police and fire for working with us during their negotiations to make this possible for our non-civil servant staff members. They work very, very hard for us, and this is the least that we can do to uh, compensate you for the loyalty and, and everything that you give to us. So thank you. you approved? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Lupe. Thank you. Item number nine. Item 11. Consideration and action on resolution number 2015-005, authorizing the execution of an interlocal agreement between the City of Brownsville and Texas Department of Transportation for litter removal, roadside mowing, and palm tree trimming along spe specified sections of U.S. Highway 7748 in Brownsville, Texas, as specified in Attachment A of the agreement. Mayor Commissioners, this is a short-term contract we will have with Texas till August to do uh, cutting when necessary, when we are, and we re, when we request such, uh, in June we will work on a longer term contract with them. They're going through procurement processes, and thus we'll wait till June to get a longer contract. But we, we want to keep this contract in in place up to that time. So we're saying August of this year. Hear a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Item number twelve. Item 12, consideration and action to approve a contract between the City of Brownsville and the Brownsville Convention and Visitors Bureau for a portion of certain hotel motel tax monies. Mayor, Commission, uh, uh, no fault of Bina Yala, their CEO, we have no copy of the contract in your, in your packet. It will mirror the contract we've had with them in the past, a three-year contract. Uh, we can either move to have it passed uh, with condition that it be reviewed by our attorney or we can table to the next meeting. It's the same same contract, same yeah. amount? It'll mirror the same contract, the same responsibilities they have and such. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Item number 13. Sorry. I'm sorry. Commissioner, I just asked, I would ask you to convey to the board if they would consider a cost of living increase for their employees. Absolutely. Thank I'll you. I'll tell them. Okay, item number 13. Item 13, consideration and action to request authorization to renew the term contract for residential solid waste collection and brush bulky collection services to the city of Brownsville. This is our residential and garbage collection contract with uh, Allied Waste. We recommend highly that it pass. We are working with them to have recycling, uh, two recycling locations uh, in the city uh, on a bi-weekly period or once a week uh, in, in certain parts of the city to address the issue of recycling. 
they're willing to do that with us. Uh, and and all, all, all the recycling that is uh, turned in by our residents uh, will be uh, taken to a, to a proper location by them uh, and the funding uh, uh, awarded to the city. But we highly recommend that this contract be uh, approved. Would it approve? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Griselda, please you. note that I'm abstaining. That's right. Okay. They wash the cars. Thank you very much. <laughs> Number 14. Item 14, consideration and action to request authorization to renew the contract for ad valorem tax collection services. This is our contract with Limebarger. We are requesting that it be extended one year, uh, beginning June 30th of this year to June 30th, 2015. Approved. Second. Second. Again. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Number Thank you. 15. Item 15, consideration and action to award a contract to accept the guaranteed maximum price for the construction of one safety shelter dome at the Brownsville Sports Park. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Commission. Um, I'm Damaris McGlone, Assistant Parks and Recreation Director here on behalf of uh, Director Chris Patterson. Um, this is in consideration and action to authorize amendment number one for the guaranteed maximum price, GMP, for the construction of one safety shelter dome at the Brownsville Sparks Park, DR-1791-359 to Spa Glass of Harlingen, Texas, in the amount of $5,279,402. Uh, construction, hopefully I said that right, construction budget limit to not exceed 5279,402.00. Total construction duration, including completion for change order number one is 245 days, about eight months, um, from notice to proceed from the city. Funding for this amendment number one is available through um, CO account number 45-8223-848-345. The administration of the Parks and Recreation Department concurs with this recommendation. Please see attached memorandum from Mr. Chris Christopher Patterson, Parks and Re Recreation Department Director. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions? Motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Item number 16. Item 16, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase and delivery of vehicles for the Brownsville Police Department. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. We're asking uh, for your authority to purchase two police canine uh, police package Tahoes to be used by our K-9 division. Total cost for, for the, the two vehicles is 58398 which would be funded through our forfeiture fund account 28-311-943. Approved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. <clears throat>